I know a lot, but they won't let me speak my truth, late Mobad's wife spills the tea. One me, the late singer Mobad's widow, writes a message in which she expresses her fear of being killed by the same individuals who murdered her husband, despite knowing a lot about his death. The mother of one went on social media to report that her husband's tormentors had silenced him by circulating rumors about him. According to her, her husband was often attacked in public and forced to live in continuous terror of his tormentors. She stated that she had a lot to say, but her captors would never let her tell the truth, and she voiced concern that they would kill her as they had murdered her husband. Mobad's wife says, They silenced my husband by spreading rumors that he was on drugs, and now they've been targeting me by releasing a voice note I recorded a few years ago for medical purposes. They're attacking our only child by libeling him as illegitimate. Duh. M. My husband was messed up mentally, psychologically, and physically. If he had continued speaking publicly about his challenges, perhaps he would still be alive today. I wish he had summoned the courage to come public as many times as he could, but he didn't want anyone to see his vulnerability. He was a gentle and calm soul. Making a man feel inferior, making him live in fear, assaulting him publicly, amongst other, is what they subjected my husband to. The last time they attacked him, I begged him to speak out, but he felt powerless against the influence of the industry gods. Mobad would have sought medical treatment after his injury if he didn't live in constant fear. He avoids hospitals because he believed the medical system could be compromised, and doctors bribed to harm him. I know a lot, but they won't allow me to speak my truth. Your favorite fake activists and bloggers can continue defaming me, but I pray God rewards them for their actions. If they eventually kill me me too, like they did Mobad, just know I said it. It may not be direct. So many things have happened since I lost my husband, yet I can't speak. I am helpless, but I know God will see me through this. I want the whole world to know that I tried to speak up, just as my husband always wanted to, but they bullied him to silence as they are currently doing to me. The DNA issue is one that has brought tears to my eyes and pain to my heart and my legal team has advised me not to dignify anyone with a response. However, I feel compelled to address the misconceptions arising from my silence. Let me clarify, there has never been any doubt or discussion about Liam's paternity until my husband's demise. It is disheartening to hear false narratives circulating on social media. My husband never for once questioned the paternity of our sunshine during his lifetime, neither did my father-in-law or his families. The first time I heard about his doubt was on social media. He never spoke to me personally about the DNA till this very day. My father-in-law's legal team reached out to my legal team, who then gave him the terms and conditions in which the DNA will be conducted. Since November, I have been waiting for a court order to proceed with the DNA testing. However, I am now being asked to take Liam to my father-in-law so the test can be done. Which of you will take your son to such a man in this circumstance? If you were in my shoes, will you feel safe to take your son to a man who has come online to defame your character and lie of you? You've all seen the curses and threats made on my son's enemy yet some of you are telling me to expose my son to further potential harm? The relentless social media bullying and threats have made it impossible for me to even take Liam out in public safely. All I ever did was love Illyrialua selflessly and expected nothing in return. Yet, this is the cruel reality I now face. Liam is our sunshine and the only precious gift Illyrialua left me with. I will protect him with every ounce of my blood and until my last breath.